questions in-house. Can we have the additional microphone, please? Thank you. Thank you. So you would like to go with your question? Yes. Thank you. Good afternoon. Uh, my question is actually not far from. Uh, I'm just trying to uh, ask a question from uh, what the Honorable uh, Minister of State uh, he emphasized about uh, our economy. So uh, he mentioned into stability where we'll see a stable. Productivity we have in the country where the like uh, yourself right there right now. Are there times where the government sit down and look at putting or channeling their energy into local production in the country? So as time goes on, we should be part of producing things rather than keep, uh, you know, it's like present right now, we rely fully on uh, on the dollar rate only, and we only care about the dollar rising and falling. We don't care about what we produce to push out there. We're out here, we are trying to achieve a scheme where we can be full part of production and lots more, but there's nothing the government is doing independently as a government to push that force. So I don't know, how long do we keep living state of the dollar and the naira continuously and then we're not looking at the government looking at uh, uh, big productions like cars like gadgets like food production and other things so this is my question right now basically i'm trying to get an idea into what the government wants to do about this part so probably as an inner cycle you could hint also Okay, again, maybe you you just want, you just, you have um, this thing that now I'm trying to ask these questions and that. So with that, you are not really focused on what I've been saying since morning. I came up with that. We will get to a stage that we will have one local government, one product. I said that. Yes, you are looking at cast. <laughs> you are looking at... Um, uh, gadgets, you are looking at laptops, you are looking at that. But one thing you don't re recognize, I even, you know, I'm from Ondo State, I even take you back to Ondo State, that can't we produce our own palm wine and package it like Radler and that, that the president have made up his mind. I talked about the video that they are not spreading, that this economy we are going to stabilize it as soon as possible. And the only way you can stabilize the economy is when the government also patronize the made in Nigeria so that you won't be talking about dollar, dollar, dollar again. So if there's anything to your question, the government is, you know, let me just aggressively working. And the work cannot show face until when it's being implemented fully, that you can sit down in an enabled environment and thrive, work, get money to your pocket, and make sure that that money is useful for you. And that's why I said the only mistake we are doing, or the only thing we are doing, is that we, as a young people, we are looking for now, 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 now money. That you should start a business now, and you should start driving pens now. 
So coming from the outside, like you said, before I become a government, uh, uh, this thing, it is, we know, even as now, we are still a product of struggling, and we are still struggling to make things happen. And let me assure you again, very soon, in the language of the president, don't worry. A day, you can't, it's not a day that give back, give back to you, that you start talking no. I'm sure if there's anybody here that start talk, started talking when they give back to him, they will run away. Even the parents will leave a person. So the government is working on it. Our local product is, a, a lot of people also, okay, sorry, let me say this. A lot of us don't make research. Like I said, we do trend. You know Nexim, I've been doing a lot about um, Nigerian meat product. Last month, I was in Lagos. And I see that a lot of things is happening in Lagos with the governor and everything that we have some companies that are setting, not fully manufacturing, but they are setting up a vehicle manufacturing company in this country. And the government has also made up its mind to patronize them, even to do more on importation or whatever, so that our NERA can go home. So, my brother, everything is on the track. And now, it's on a fast track. Before, it's just like the vehicle, you make an example. So, I will also go back to the vehicle. You know, when you are driving a vehicle, and it's being put on a reverse gear, how would the vehicle work? Now, it's on a drive. It's gradually. The gear is changing, and it's going to be changed very soon. Thank you very much, Your Excellency. Very insightful. We have another question from someone in-house at the back. Let's try and keep our questions more about why we are here, learning about writing a business plan, because that is what we will be assessed on. Let's also try and keep our questions short and concise. The way you ask your questions will tell me about what I'm expecting to read in your business plans. Uh -huh. I've said it. Okay, Where are now? Let's go. Please, I want to get something here. Like now, I'm into fascinator. I'm into fascinator. And I decide that, okay, I want to go into another thing that I know that it will, it will be profitable to me. Like this business plan, can I base my business plan on that new business? Yes, you can. If you remember, yesterday we spoke extensively about who can write a business plan or who should write a business plan or have a business plan. A business plan is for any and every business. Whether you are a startup, whether you are already existing, whether you are a legacy company, you can have and own a business plan. So yes, madam, you can do your business plan either on your fascinator business or on this new proposed business. Both of them would suffice. Another question? Good afternoon, everybody. Good afternoon. I want to say that I'm very happy to be part of this training. And it has opened my eyes to so many things. And that is why we have the privilege to have the Minister for Youth and uh, the SSE to our president. My question is this. I've been into production for, for many years, and we have challenges in doing those productions. The production like air cream, shampoo, Vaseline, uh, Appy, Appy is a brown, then many other productions like the painting too. But we have challenge. What is this our challenge? Our challenge is that you bring it to this place now. They don't want to patronize you because it's not a brand. You package your product, you bring it. I, when I came in, I've gone into the governance room. I see Appy, I see this, I see that. I say, wow. So this was done to pronounce our local image. <laughs> so the way the minister was saying that uh, we will pronounce local image, I said, well, let me catch him here. That from today, I want to supply him all he will be using in his house, what he will be using in his office. Even in this office, I will supply all the cleaning intensives that they are going to be using. Your question is being answered. You are welcome. <laughs> Please. And again, again, when you have products like that, when you have product like that, yes. I like that spirit. When you have product like that, um, go to Smedan. Okay. 
Small them. Small and medium and I've gone there, sir. Just get in touch with them. They will sell it for you. I've gone there before, sir. And that was before. Now you have a young chap <laughs> that knows the reason why this product must be sold out. The reason why we must get used to it. So now we are forcing ourselves. That's why what you said is welcome. Bring it. We will buy it. Go to Smedan. Ask them. This is what you've been doing. This, this, and this. Write a letter to my office. I will send you there. Thank you. So we, we want to promote this and we are ready. And that is why I use the language aggressively. Not all these uh, talk, 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 talk every time. Let's be practical about it. Thank you, sir. I will bring Thank you very much. Any other question? We have one more question in the back. Good afternoon, everyone. Good afternoon. Uh, my name is Iben Muyua. Can you be and the company? Best. You don't have something of your own that you have invested into the business. But as you were talking, you were mentioning investors, investors. So I want to know is there are there investors who would like to also invest in startup? Like you, your your business has not gotten any traction, you don't have numbers. Do we have investors who can actually invest in that? Thank you. Thank you very much. Um, I will start with your first question, the difference between an executive summary and a company summary. So we spoke at length about an executive summary being ideally a one-page summary that we write at the end of our business plan that would highlight major aspects of the business plan, right? A lot of us are on the move, we're on the go. Remember I asked the question, how many people are busy? We're all busy. So sometimes the person you need to look at your business plan is actually really busy. But that executive summary, that one pager, would tell the person what he or she needs to know about your business plan, whether they even want to bother reading it or not. So your executive summary is a summary of the document you have written, which in this instance is the business plan. Your company summary, on the other hand, is a summary about your company. Right? Remember, we, took, we looked at different parts of a business plan. I know we've not looked at all the parts, but we started looking at parts, the introduction, the executive summary, the company overview, things like that, right? We also talked about the, pack, the fact that there's going to be a financial section, a market and research section. So a business plan has so many aspects. Those are what we would summarize within the executive summary. But your company summary is talking about just the company. Okay? So the company summary is about the company. The executive summary in the instance of this business plan is a summary about what we've written in our business plan. I hope that clarifies. Your second question about asking if there are investors that are interested in startups, the answer to that is yes. You can find people that will invest in a company that is literally just starting up, has zero operations, and is about to kick off. That is why we should pay utmost attention to this course. Because if you provide a compelling business plan, a sellable business plan, a world-class business plan to a potential investor, even as a startup with zero history, you would be amazed that they would be more excited about the business than even you, the business owner. So the answer is yes, but how compelling is your business plan? How engaging is your business plan? Does the, is the business really a business or a, have we forgotten, a hobby? Exactly. So those are some of the reasons why a lot of people may or may not want 
to invest in a startup. Also, individual preference, right? It might also be a preferential thing. But there, do, there are people that would invest in your business as a startup. I hope that clarifies. Thank you very much. We're going to, for the interest of time, dive right into the questions from our online participants. The first question is from an anonymous attendee. Please, are we going to be given a kind of template for writing our business plan and the tools to use for writing it at the end of the training? What really is a template? <clears throat> I would say that every step, every topic, every day we are here, that is your template. <laughs> you guys want the easy the easy way out. I've told us yesterday we're going to work for this business plan so that when we get that grant, we will use it appropriately, right? So this is the template. The training is the template um, for, for our uh, anonymous attendee online. We encourage you to kindly pay attention. Like I did mention, we will see an actual business plan during the course of the training. The reason why I did not add it to the course material is because I don't want us to just go and copy that template and copy what we've seen. I want it to be unique to you. I want you to be able to say, I started this business plan from start to finish. I'm proud of my work. And at the end of the training, I was able to win a 500,000 Naira grant. So yes, we will not be given an actual template. However, we will be given a cup. We would see, let me not say we would be given. We would see what a business plan looks like. But every day we are taking the steps and processes to achieve what the business plan should look like at the end. Let's consider the training our template. From another anonymous attendee, please, what is the difference? Okay, we answered that yesterday, sorry. Anonymous attendee, how many pages? We answered that yesterday as well. Let's... Um, Let's try and pay attention, guys, because some of these questions were answered already in the course of the training so that we're not repeating questions and we're giving more people the opportunity to ask their questions for the interest of time. So I would just answer that, yes, there is no fixed number of pages for your business plan. I think I even spoke about that today. Some people might have five pages of their business plan. Some people might have 500 pages for their business plan. We're not counting the number of pages. We're not going to grade you on the number of pages. We're going to grade you on the quality of your content. Is this business really a business? Right? So don't worry too much about number of pages for your business plan. Can we increase the font size? This is from Silas Uma. Can we increase the font size of our headings or subtopics? Yes, you can. Yusuf Lawal, what is the first thing to look at when writing your business plan? I think the first thing we should look at is the actual business. We should be able to identify if what, we, what do we want to do. That's the first step. So the first step is actually identifying the business. And then all other things would follow from there on. I'm not sure I understand this question from Yusuf Lawal. It says, is it your budget or your ideas? Not really sure what you mean by that. Oluwa Kemi Ogunride, does your business plan differ? Like, do you have to write, a different, write it in a different pattern for different investors? We also addressed that yesterday. Um, Hamzat Ali. Sorry, please, can I ask a question about that business plan? The business plan is for this program or for our entrepreneur business. The business plan for now or after the end of the program. Mm. <laughs> okay, sorry, I was a little confused by that question. So I think what she's trying to ask is, when are we going to submit the business plan? We also spoke about this yesterday, that the business plans will be submitted at the end of the two weeks training, which is why we implore you to please make sure you immerse yourself in the training so that you don't. 
Again, I encourage all of us to start working on our business plans immediately. Don't start working on your executive summaries. Shao, no, it's not yet time. But little things like your company profile, your company summary, your mission, your vision, your core values, you can start working on that immediately. Okay, we'll take just one more question from online for the interest of time. Some of these questions have already been answered. Okay, I think this is a useful question that can help everyone. Sally who has Hassisat um, from online has asked, is it compulsory for a business plan to have a cash flow? I think if I do understand that question, she's really asking about a finan the financials, numbers for the business. And the answer is yes. Remember we said we were going to talk about numbers and we said many of us don't like numbers. All right, we don't have to like numbers, but it's something we have to learn how to do. Because, like I said, some of us that already have existing businesses, they are not businesses, they are hobbies. Because they are not profitable, they are not scalable, they are not sustainable, right? So, a lot of times, when we look and dissect our numbers, it tells us a lot about that business. And anyone that is interested in investing, partnering, sponsoring, whatever part of your business, they would want to know about the numbers. We will end it there today. We do apologize that we can't take all the questions today. I would like to hand over the microphone to our um, senior special assistant on technical, vocational, and entre entrepreneurial education to just close up for the day. Thank you. The Honorable Minister of State, Youth, Thank you very much for coming. My sister, the SSA on social events, I thank you very much for coming. The Commissioner for Youth for Quara State, I thank you so much for coming. I thank everybody here for joining this course, both here physically and the thousands we have online. Was, I'm so overwhelmed by your um, presence and also by the questions and the interaction. I just want to encourage you to continue to come every day if you're physical and if you're online, continue to join us because I think one of the criteria of the, of the course is everything you learn on a daily basis has to be put in your business plan. And we want to support your business. We want you to grow. We want to give out those solar kiosks. They are here. These resources are here for you. So we encourage you to use this as a key to unlock a door to promote your business. So I thank you once again. God bless you. We will be taking a group photo outside, outside, and more importantly, see you all here tomorrow. And to our online community as well, we thank you so much for your questions, your comments, your active participation. There are so many of you. We appreciate your presence, and we look forward to having you back here tomorrow at 10 a.m. Thank you all. So for the uh, benefit of our Muslim brothers and sisters, tomorrow being Friday, we would still resume here at 10 a.m. tomorrow, but the closing time will be adjusted. We would let you know what time we would close off tomorrow. So thank you very much. Thank you.